myself, Dr. P. R. Krishnaveni, Associate Professor of Chemistry, Sasi Institute of Technology and Engineering, Thada Baligudam. Welcome to the continuation lecture of Properties on Refractories. Properties of Refractories. So, in earlier lecture, we have discussed about refractiness. Refractiness is nothing but the measurement of stability of refractory without undergoing change in deformation with change in temperature. Refractiness is measured as it is measured in terms of softening temperature. And it can be measured by using pyrometric cone test or this can also be called as Seeger cone test. So in the earlier lecture we had discussed about this Seeger cone test. Next property is refractiness under load. Refractiness under load means it gives an idea about stability. The stability of refractory depends on temperature resistance and load bearing capacity. This load bearing capacity or refractiness under load can be determined by taking in a rectangular container applying a load of 1.75 kg and we will observe the reduction in height of the refractory material. The height at which the 10 percent more than 10 percent is reduced that temperature is noted. So a good refractory material should not undergo more than 10 percent reduction in the original height at a temperature of 1350 degrees centigrade when load of 3 kg per centimeter square is applied. Next property is chemical inertness. A refractory material should be chemically inert. Why means the furnace may contain several chemicals and the refractory material may react with that chemicals forming fusible compounds. or it may cause corrosion of the furnace. If the refractory is not chemically inert, it may form fusible compounds with the chemicals available in the furnace or it may cause the corrosion of the furnace. So a better guideline is not to use acidic refractories in a basic furnace and basic refractories in acidic furnace. That means It is better not to use Al2O3 in basic furnace and not to use dolomite bricks in acidic furnace. Why means Al2O3 is an acidic refractory, dolomite bricks are basic refractories. Next, dimensional stability. Dimensional stability is the property which tells about the resistance towards change in volume. 
that means a refractive material should not undergo change in volume by heating the temperature high temperature should not undergo change in volume this change may be reversible or irreversible if the change is irreversible it may lead to expansion or contraction of the refractory material next property is thermal expansion and contraction in general a solid material will expand on heating and contract on cooling so allowance may must be made in the furnace for thermal expansion and contraction next property is thermal conductivity so some of the industrial uh, industries they need refractories that have high thermal conductivity and some need refractories with low thermal conductivity depending upon the type of the furnace using and this thermal conductivity mainly depends on chemical composition and porosity refractory material with high porosity will have low thermal conductivity why means the air entrapped in the pores will act as insulators whereas a dense refractory will have high thermal conductivity next property is porosity porosity is a measure of pore ratio is a measure of ratio of pore volume to bulk volume this property is important for refractories why means porosity will uh, is responsible for several chemical and physical characteristics of the refractory and how we can measure this porosity means porosity p is equal to w minus d by w minus a into 100 where w is the saturated weight of the polymer specimen saturated weight of specimen d is the drying weight of the specimen a is the saturated weight plus moisture content of specimen next property is electrical conductivity refractories which are used for lining electric furnaces
they should have low electrical conductivity in general refractories are poor conductors of electricity except graphite graphite is a good conductor of electricity in general the electrical conductivity of refractories can be increased with increase in temperature next property is heat capacity the heat capacity of a refractory depends on thermal conductivity specific heat and specific gravity of the refractory material or specific gravity of the specimen in general dense refractories will have high heat capacity next property is thermal spalling thermal spalling means nothing but spalling cracking fracturing and breaking of refractory this cracking fracturing or breaking of refractory generally takes place due to sudden rise in temperature leading to uneven stress and strain in the body of the refractor so that's why a good refractory material should have low thermal spalling and in general the thermal spalling of some of the refractories are silicon carbide has more thermal spalling than fire clay than magnesite which has more than silica next property is permeability permeability means it is the tendency to allow or diffuse gases liquids or molten solids into refractory material this permeability in general increases with increase in porosity last property is texture in general coarse or light textured bricks they are light in weight 
why they are light in weight means they have large porosity as they have large porosity they are more resistant to temperature change on the other hand soft and dense textured bricks they are heavy in height and they have low porosity so that's why they are less resistant to temperature change so these are the some of the important properties of refractories next applications of refractories refractories are used in construction of furnaces kilns chimneys stacks boilers they are also used for lining of portland cement rotary kiln the construction of crown and arches of furnaces combustion zone and melting furnaces they are used in pyrometer sheets and crucibles and hot zones of cement rotary kilns with this refractory topic is completed in the next session i'll start lubricants thank you once again